Hollywood's top musical star of the 1960s first arrived on film by means of a flying umbrella. Julie Andrews is the personification of what pure, total talent can accomplish on screen. Starring the toast of Broadway's musical stage, the incomparable Julie Andrews. For a spoonful of sugar. Julie is an angel. She is absolutely the quintessential lady. You know, she's just elegant and beautiful and genteel, full of dignity and grace. Julie was just so wholesome. She was just like America's sweetheart, except she was from England. We, we just loved her so much. She was just it. She was on the screen able to reach your heart. And there was no proscenium between her and the audience. You know, they come very few and far between like Julie. A perfect musical masterpiece, Mary Poppins, is the story of a magical nanny who brings joy to a family in Edwardian-era London. With a score by Disney veterans Richard and Robert Sherman and a strong supporting cast, Mary Poppins turned out to be the most highly acclaimed live-action musical to come out of the Disney studio. Mary Poppins, uh, it was choreographed by Dee Dee Wood and Mark Bro. Mark and Dee Dee were so much fun, and they worked so well together. They really fed each other creatively and artistically. Mary Poppins was the first film that Dee Dee and I ever did. Of course, we were nervous wrecks, but at the premiere, uh, the applause was terrific, and it just, oh, I had tears in my eyes. I'm almost going to have tears now. <laughs> oh, it's a jolly holiday with Mary. Dick Van Dyke never had a dance lesson in his life. Maybe he has now, but at the time he had not had any dance. And he's just, anything I asked him to do, he could do. He was just a natural dancer. I mean, there's one segment in uh, the chimney sweep number when he climbs up on the roof of some guy and it works with two other fellows. He does, ex look at the, look at the, he doesn't, it's exactly the same. He just worked like crazy. He did flips, he did somersaults, everything. Everything I asked him to do, he did. He was wonderful. I remember once we were having lunch and uh, they were talking about uh, putting some sound effects in the part where Dick Van Dyke dances with the penguins. And I remember we had our, T-shirts rolled up and, you know, we had just finished lunch. We're patting our tummies, right? And the sound effects guy walks by and he says, that's it, that's it. He says, you three guys come with me. So he took us to the soundstage and we had to do the, the sound effects for the penguins walking around, which was kind of fun. Mary Poppins won five Academy Awards, the most ever for a Disney production. The huge success of the film prompted two other big-budget musicals adapted from British children's books. The, hills are alive. the Sound of the Music is the greatest musical I think that Julie ever made. Robert Wise did a beautiful job of directing it. And those kids, you just love those kids and you loved her with the kids and you loved the music. It's one of the greatest musicals of all time. It's also one of the few Broadway musicals that looks better on film than it ever looked on Broadway because of that wonderful Austrian scenery. And so not only do you get what is really a lovely film score by Rogers and Hammerstein and some wonderfully talented people like Julie Andrews and Christopher Plummer, but you've also got the scenery, a story. It, the whole package was just came at the right time. It made everybody feel so good, and it still does today. Recently I saw it on an airplane, and I wept like a baby, and I loved every single frame of it. And all I could think of is I've got to show this to my five-year-old granddaughter, and she loves it too. The Sound of Music came about when uh, Fox was in deep trouble financially because of Cleopatra. And that took away so much money. The company was on the verge of bankruptcy. 20th Century Fox nearly collapsed from the strain of spending $40 million on Cleopatra, starring Elizabeth Taylor. Fox moguls Daryl and Richard Zanuck slashed expenditures and searched for a hit to restore their fortunes. 
They had done well filming Rodgers and Hammerstein's stage hits in the 1950s and already owned the screen rights to The Sound of Music. With a tight $8 million budget, it proved to be one of the most popular films of all time, raking in a huge profit and garnering five Academy Awards, including Best Picture. I remember at that time, people talked of nothing else. Sound of Music was like an explosion, and people went to see it again and again and again. The Sound of Music uh, was a very popular film around the world. No matter what country we go to, people hear that I've not directed The Sound of Music and say, oh, that picture. It has a universal appeal, I think, that no other film that I've made, I think very few films have. It's great storytelling. It's about the things that really matter to us, about hope, about love, about family, about freedom. And it's all done with music that, again, is part of the world's subconscious. With The Sound of Music, the Julie Andrews became an international star. And after that, she could do no wrong. New York's Criterion Theater and the dazzling world premiere of Universal star-studded Technicolor musical, Thoroughly Modern Millie. The other one that she made in the meantime was Thoroughly Modern Millie. Wonderful, wonderful George Roy Hill picture. Julianne's persona was this coy, cute little, you know, flapper type. Jimmy, oh Jimmy, oh what joy. Her co-star was the marvelous Carol Channing. <laughs> That's all I ever knew. George Roy Hill was the director. You know, he did the sting, my gosh. Let's face it, he really did some great movies. Thoroughly Modern Millie is a delightful film. Carol Channing was in it, one of her rare um, movie appearances. And uh, Mary Tyler Moore and uh, Julie Andrews and B. Lilly. It, it, it was just a romp. I just thought it was great fun. The film featured a hilarious farewell performance from stage comedian Beatrice Lilly. In my opinion, it's a wonderful film. It is one of the last integrated musicals that they made in the 60s. To my mind, Victor Victoria was the last great accident in the world of live musical film. You had just the right people. Once again, the great Julie Andrews as your centerpiece, but with Robert Preston, who is not to be underestimated as a stage or screen performer. Uh, I've lost my job performing in the cabaret, and she has, the, the Bath Light Opera Company has folded on her. And I have just seen her in one of my boyfriend's suits, because her dress shrunk in the rain. And she makes such an impression on me that I get the idea, talk her into it, start giving her the haircut and say right now she's going to be the world's greatest female impersonator. You had Blake Edwards, one of the great farce filmmakers of all time, making a film that without music would be a hilarious comedy in its own right. But the songs are not just add-ons, they are vibrant parts of the storytelling process. This film stands out as an old-fashioned musical with very modern sensibilities. I play a lady who's pretending to be a man who's pretending to be a lady. Now, if you can figure that out, <laughs> you're a better man than I. It's, an, it's um, a gentle film, a romantic film. It has some wonderful music in it. And uh, it also has a lot to say about uh, the roles we play, male, female, uh, homosexual, um, women's lib, women's rights, uh, it, it says a lot and kind of makes you think. Director Blake Edwards had made a name for himself with such films as The Days of Wine and Roses, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and the Pink Panther series. He just has a musical sensibility. It's just what he loves. You know, he had such that, that incredible connection with Henry Mancini. Mm -hmm. Victor Victoria, um, he was driving that ship and you could you felt you were secure in his hands. It was an absolute dream to work with Blake Edwards. One day we were all in dailies. He leaned over to me and he said, do you sing? And I said, I do. And he said, do you dance? And I said, I do. And he said, well, I want to... I want to create a number for Norma, you know, and then he flew Henry Mancini in and Leslie Brickus and Patty Stone did the choreography and it, you know, it was, it was a dream come true for me. Oh, so baby, the 
jazz hot may be what's holding my soul together. Don't know whether it's morning or night. Only know it's sounding right. So come on in and play me the jazz. 